Okay, guys, lesson 82, evaluation of functions. Black man, give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black man. So, if we have a function, f of x equals x squared plus 5, we can plug in any value of x, so if we f plug in 1, so f of 1 equals 1 squared plus 5. So that it just equals one plus five, which is six. Okay, so functional notation is, remember, is kind of weird because this kind of looks like it says f times x. This is not f times x. This is the function of x is to square x, whatever x is, plus five. So x is whatever's inside this parenthesis. So f of one is to square one and add five. So it's just six. So all you're doing is plugging this value into this right side of the equation. So don't think of this as an equation. Think of this as just plugging and chugging whatever is in that. So take the number out of there and forget about this left side, okay? So sometimes it's helpful to just literally cross it out. So f of one, plug in one for x and then forget about it. Let's try an example. So here's example one. Let's say our function f of x is this, x squared, plus x minus 10. So what is f of five? Okay, so we're going to square five, add five, and then subtract 10. So that's 25 plus five minus 10. So that just equals 20. So f of five is 20, okay? Let's try another example. Example two, let's say that we have a some different functions, h of x equals x squared plus x plus one. So the function of, of x in h is to square it, add it, and then add one. So you can plug in any number. So like h of, of negative two would be negative two squared plus negative two plus one. So that's four plus negative two plus one. So that's just three, boom. But you can also just plug in whatever you want. Let's say we wanna just plug in a letter, A. So all we're doing is substituting A for X. So this would now become A squared plus A plus one, done. That's the evaluation of the variable A in the H function. Well, what about A squared? Well, let's try it. Just plug in A squared for X. So now it's a squared squared plus a squared plus one. Well, what's a squared squared? Two times two is four. So a to the fourth plus a squared plus one, done. Let's try another example. Example three, example three, example three. So f of x equals x squared plus one. All right, so what is f of x plus two? So all we're doing is taking this and we're plugging it in to that x. So that equals x plus two squared plus one. We could do this. So let's FOIL that out. So remember, this is not, you don't distribute that two. You would if this was all being multiplied and you can, you can multiply the exponents, but it's not. This is x plus two times itself. So this is a FOIL problem. So FOIL it out. x squared plus two x plus two x plus four, and then plus this one on the end. So combine like terms, x squared plus four x plus five. Boom, done. Now, moving on, we're gonna talk about domain and range a little bit. Domain, remember, is what you put into a machine, what you put into a function, and range is what comes out of it, okay? If you think about a function here, so here's my function. My domain are these guys. And my range is what comes out of it. So. For example, like in, in one of our last examples, we had, uh, um, if f of x was x squared, you put a two in, 
and what comes out of it is a four. If you put a three in, what comes out of it is a nine. If you put a four in, what comes out of it is a 16. All right, so in order for this to be a true function, there can only be one outcome for everything you put into it. So if two goes to two different things, like if two goes to four and like negative four, then that's not a function. Okay, so for in order for something to be a function, there are rules to a function. Well, first of all, let's define a function. A function is just a mapping from the domain to the range, okay? And in order for it to be a true function, two things have to be true. Number one, each element of the domain maps to only one element of the range, okay? So for example, this two can't go to four and negative four. So that wouldn't be a function if that was the case. So number two, each element of the range corresponds to at least one element of the domain. So here's the rules. Everything that you put in can only spit out one, but you could have the same result for different things that you put in. So elements of the domain can only go to one element of the range, but elements of the range, there's multiple members of the domain set that can produce the same result. So for example, if you had a machine, like the nuggetizer, that whatever you put into it made a chicken nugget. Literally, you can put whatever you want into the machine. That's still a function, it's functional. But if your results were unpredictable, like if you put in something and you didn't know what it was gonna spit, it spit out two different things or spit out, you did, sometimes it spits out this, sometimes it spits out something else, then that's not a function. And, and you don't want that machine because it's not predictable. You want your machine to be predictable functional. So everything in the domain can only go to one element of the range. So let's do some examples here. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So here's example four, because this is still that same lesson. F of X equals two X. So the function of X is just to double it. All right. So find the domain and range. Okay. So domain and range. So what can you put in the machine and what is it going to spit out? Okay, so when you're looking for the domain, you basically want to know what doesn't break it. So you can double anything. You can double whatever you want. So your domain is going to be all real numbers. Remember, this is the symbol for real numbers. Okay, well, what's your range? Well, you can pretty much cut everything in half too. So your range is gonna be all real numbers as well. All right, well, let's try another example. Let's say that f of x equals three, okay? So if you tried to plug in anything for x, f of seven, well, all you're doing is substituting a seven for an X. There's no X's over here. So it's just three. F of five is also three. F of negative 496 is also three. So whatever you plug into this machine, this is kind of like the nuggetizer. It just produces a three. So if I were to map this out here, if this is my function, I put in a seven, I get out a three. I put in a five, I get out a three. I put in a negative 496, I get a three. This is okay, this is a function because negative 496 always goes to three. Five always goes to three. So there's, it only goes to one thing. So this is a function. So the domain is whatever you wanna put into it, but your range is always this set. Three, it's just three. All right, now, if you had something like this, if you had a three going to multiple things, this is not a function because three goes to multiple things, but multiple things can go to one thing, but one thing can't go to multiple things. Is that confusing? Let's try another example. So example six, this time I'm just gonna give you a graph. So let's say that this graph looks like this. Let's say we have an open circle here and then it comes down to here at the origin and then it goes up to 
right there and stops right there. Okay, so remember your domain are your X values, what you put into it, and your range are your Y values. So your domain, okay, so your domain is your, your X value. So we're gonna just say X is a real number. So remember what this symbol means. It means X is an element of the real set or a member of the real number set. And then we're gonna put a line here and that line just means such that. So X is a real number such that, okay, well now let's define X. Remember X is how far left and right it goes. So how far left does X go on this graph? Okay, so it doesn't, there's no X's over here. So this is what we're looking at. We're looking at the actual graph. So it goes to, it looks like about negative two, but that open circle, what does open circle mean? It means that's an everything but. So it's everything greater than negative two. So X is greater than negative two, but look over here, that is less than or equal to three. So you're not looking at Y values. So we're just looking at this. So if you just kind of look at this sideways or maybe, yeah, look at it sideways, then it's just going from negative two all the way over to positive three. But that positive three is a solid dot. So it gets a less than or equal to. Another way to think about this is just step on this graph, squish it with your foot. What does it look like? Well, then it just looks like this. If you were to look at it on a number line, it would look like this. So you had negative two, one, two, three, and positive three. If you stepped on it, this is what it would look like. See that? That's what it looks like. So that's your X values. So your range is your Y values. So Y is an element of real numbers because it's all real numbers. Remember, they're solid lines, so it's everything in between. Such that, well, where does the Y start and where does it end? So instead of stepping on it, you're gonna squish it like that. So what does that look like? Well, let's try to picture that. So this time we have a vertical number line. And we have one, two, three, four, five. So here's one, two, three, four, five. So this one, if you squish it, it's there and there, and that little circle kind of gets mixed in with the rest of that line. So this is what that looks like. Well, how do you define that? Well, it starts at zero, which is less than or equal to Y, which is less than or equal to Ooh, I went up to five. You should only go up to four, sorry. Four, okay? So there's your domain and range. So remember your domain is how chubby it is and your range is how tall it is, okay? Chubby, tall, got it. One, let's do a couple more, example seven. So this is just a good way to visualize functions too. So let's say our f of x is the square root of five minus x. And I wanna find my domain and range. Remember your domain is whatever doesn't break the function. So this, there are numbers that will go in here that will break this, okay? So the square root of any negative number is bad, okay? You cannot take the square root of any negative number. That is not a real solution. It's actually what we call an imaginary, imaginary number, imaginary number. Do that at home, it really helps you understand it better. So what is gonna make this end up negative? When does f minus x equal a negative number? Well, if x was five, then it would just be zero. And you can take the square root of zero, it's zero. But if x was anything greater than five, like five minus six, that equals negative one. And you can't take the square root of negative one in the real world, okay? But it's not just six, it's any number greater than six, but it's also like 5.0000000001 equals a negative number, okay? So anything greater than five but five works, so it's so you can't say greater than or equal to five. Anything greater than five is bad. So anything less than 
or equal to five is good. So domain equals the set of x as a real number such that x has to be less than or equal to five. Okay, well, what about our range? What's that gonna produce? Well, it could potentially produce anything you want. So your range is all real numbers. So really, on these guys, they'll probably just ask you for the domain. So let's do example eight. Example eight, g of x equals one over x. Well, what will break this function? What is the only number that you cannot divide by? Right, good job, zero. So x cannot equal zero. So you can say domain equals x, any real number that is not zero. So that's how you would write that. All right, so I'm gonna give you another one just because some people get confused by this. Let's say h of x is one over x minus five. Well, x can be zero because if x was zero, that would just be one over negative five. But what it can't be is five, okay? So it's not, it's not always x equals zero, it's whatever makes this denominator zero. So what x will make this denominator zero? Five, that's it. Any other number works. You can have a negative number on the bottom, you can have a positive number on the bottom, you just can't have zero, zero. All right, that's it. That's it for lesson 82. Boom, good job. We will see you in lesson 83.